السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله إن شاء الله we will commence as usual with the recitation from the Quran أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن للمتقين مفازا حدائق وأعنابا وكواعب أترابا وكأسا دهاقا لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا كذابا جزاء من ربك عطاء حسابا رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما الرحمن لا يملكون منه خطابا يوم يقوم الروح والملائكة صفا لا يتكلمون إلا من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا ذلك اليوم الحق فمن شاء اتخذ إلى ربه مآبا إن عذابا قريبا يوم ينظر المرء ما قدمت يداه ويقول الكافر ويقول الكافر يا ليتني كنت ترابا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful All praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى complete blessings and salutations upon all the messengers that were sent to mankind in order to remove mankind from the darkness to the light. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all his companions and all those who brought the goodness to us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and our offspring, those to come up to the end of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us every form of goodness and protect us from the plan of Satan, the accursed. Ameen. Honored ulama, scholars of this deen, beloved brothers and sisters, it brings me great joy to be in your midst in this beautiful city of Colombo. And as the days are passing, we are witnessing larger crowds to the degree that we were forced to change venue bearing in mind that those who had offered us other venues already have a reward upon their intention for the use of their facility as well. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all goodness. It is not easy to come up to a lecture of this sort and to fight the devil who might tell us not to go. Don't go. We have other things to do. We can make better plans. The idea here is to understand the plan of Satan. And we will only be able to understand the plan of Satan if we go back to the history of how it started. Why is he our enemy? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ 
فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًّا Indeed, shaitan is your outright enemy. So consider him an enemy. The difference between an ordinary enemy and Satan is that Satan is in disguise. An ordinary enemy, we can pick up that this person is my enemy. Or we can pick up that this is the enemy. But when it comes to the devil, Iblis comes in disguise. In the form sometimes of a person. Sometimes in the form of a friend. Sometimes in the form of a thought and an idea. And that is in a lot of cases. And sometimes in the form of a beautiful business transaction. That seems so beautiful. So shaitan, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ He sees you from a position that you do not see him. So he is sitting far and witnessing, and he is watching, and he has a remote control. You know, people used to ask, that why in the month of Ramadan, when shayateen are supposed to be tied up, do we find people committing sin? We find people getting angry, hot-headed in the afternoon of a fasting day. Normally we fast. Shaitan wants to spoil our deeds. That is his plan. So before the end of the day, you find people beginning to scream and yell at each other, swearing, shouting, fighting. Why? When we heard that shaitan is supposed to be tied, there are several explanations to that. Here Allah says that He watches you from a position that you do not see Him. There is a possibility that He is tied up, but He is controlling you via Bluetooth. I'm sure you understand that. There is also a possibility that He has a remote control. And the simple explanation is before Ramadan, He winds up the winding toy. You know the little stammering Mickey Mouse that you have? You wind it at the back. And you wind it until it winds no longer. Then you release it. It takes 30 seconds or 3 minutes to unwind. And for as long as it takes to unwind, it keeps on stamping its feet. So sometimes shaitan winds us before Ramadan. So for 30 days we are stamping according to his plan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Let us not be fooled. Shaitan hates us. He dislikes us. He promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning. How can you make someone better than me? Yesterday we spoke about arrogance and pride. There were so many different aspects of arrogance and pride, arrogance and pride that we had not had the chance to go into. But inshallah, we have got the gist of the topic. The reality is this is more for the youth. And I want to digress for a moment. Who is considered youth? That was a question posed. I don't know if I said it here in Colombo the last time. When we had a youth program, we had people with grey beards coming. We had old people with crutches coming. So I asked one man, saying, you know, this is a youth program. He said, yes. You didn't see the definition of youth? I said, what is definition of youth? Anyone whose age is made up of two digits is youth. So, starting from 11 to 99, mashallah, we are youth, we are young, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, this is more for youth. When we speak of youth, we are speaking of those not within a specific bracket of age, but within a specific bracket of energy. That's whom we are referring to. Because when you are bubbling with your energy, when you are bursting with energy, thinking that you are it, you know, it is not IT. IT is something else. It meaning you think you are the big boss. That is when we need to harness the person and we need to place reins on the Arab stallion. When we talk of the most powerful horses, without reins, the horse is a waste of time. When you put reins and you have a good man riding and he knows how to handle that steed of his, then you will achieve the winning result with that horse of yours. The same applies when we have lots of energy, bubbling, bursting, we know we have power. There must be someone who steers us, who guides us, whom we allow this rain to be held by. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that the angelic force and not the satanic force. Amen.
So, Shaitan's plan, from the very beginning, he said, I don't want anyone better than me. I don't want anyone better than me. Nowadays, you have lots of qualities of people. Sometimes you find people, they get upset when others are excelling beyond them. That is the quality of Shaitan. Shaitan initially, when Allah said, I am creating Adam, and I am creating him on my own, and I have made and given him his posture, and I have given him the best posture. You know, Allahu Akbar. Islam has taught us some teachings that are so powerful, we can stop at every sentence to speak paragraphs for, of every sentence, and every sentence within the sentences of the paragraph that is explaining the initial sentence will require also another whole paragraph to explain it, and we will continue. Now, let me tell you why I say this. I was saying moments ago that Allah created us in the best posture. Let me tell you what is that posture. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Teen, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ Indeed, I have created man in the best posture, best positioning of the organs of the body. Now that, if Allah is saying that, it is a challenge. Challenge to anyone to come up with a better posture, even for one of the organs that you have. And let me, since there are lots of young people here, let me make your minds, you know, move a little bit in, in thinking. Can you think of a better place to put even a single organ of your body than the place it is right now? Your eyes, Allah is challenging you. There is no better place to put it. Can anyone give me a better place? No one. I see smiles. People are smiling. Look, your ears. Is there a better place to put your ear? Your hair, your eyebrow. Imagine if we had nose brows, Allahu Akbar. And imagine your mouth, your teeth, your tongue. What if we had the mouth at the top and the eyes at the bottom? Allahu Akbar. Imagine when you are eating, you won't be able to see your food. As you are putting it up, you will have to feed yourself from your forehead. Imagine if our noses were where our ears were, we would be wearing glasses on our ears. One ear, the other one at the back. Imagine if the hair had to grow, for example, not in the place it is right now, but maybe from our elbows, we would need beards on our elbows. And we would, just think about it. Allah says, I challenge you, not even the combination of your five fingers where the thumb is. It is the best place for the thumb. There is no other place that you could ever possibly put that thumb, including the toes. If they were the other way around, we would lose balance. Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ We created man in the best posture. This is what Iblis became jealous of. He said, why? How can you ask Allah? Allah knows what he is doing. Allah only does that which is good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that I have created man and I am the one. No one asks me. لَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلْ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ no one can ask Allah what he does, but Allah is going to ask the others and everyone else what they do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So, Iblis says, I am not going to prostrate to Adam. I, ana khayrun minhu. I am better than him. I am better, you know, and I will not prostrate to this Adam. And I will show you, O oh Allah, you are creating Adam in order for him to become a person who will worship you, I guarantee you, he will worship me, and I will make him worship amongst his own kind, one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. So that is the plan. The plan of Satan is that we divert from worshipping the Creator, or from following the instruction of the one who made us, to following his instruction. Take a simple example. Let's go back to the word IT that we looked at moments ago. Information technology. 
If we look at how it has progressed over the years, you learn about computers and you learn about internet and how to upload and download and so on. You learn so much and then you get an apparatus, new apparatus. They tell you this is the latest laptop. What do you need to do? You need to check the booklet. The booklet of whom? If it is HP, you need a booklet from HP. We would be stupid or foolish to pick up a booklet from Toshiba when we have a laptop that is made by HP. Am I right? Imagine you find big man with a suit and a tie and he's standing at the back and he has the latest, latest technology HP. He opens it in front of a crowd of people and says, now let us read the instruction. Then he picks up a book, it says Toshiba on it and he's opening it and he's reading it in front of everyone. People will say, hey, what is this man talking about? Wallahi, that is what we are doing in our lives. We have ourselves, we are the most complicated system. Instead of reading the plan that Allah, who is our creator, instead of reading that book, we are reading another book altogether. We are following different instructions. When Allah says, you want success, obey this instruction, we say no. When we want success, we will obey another instruction. So when they say to delete, press the delete button, we go and press the enter button, saying it is a nice big button, maybe it will delete more. <laughs> but that is our system and our plan on earth. Th this is what we are doing as insan. And Allah says, look, oh man, be careful and watch out. Allah tells Adam alayhi salatu was salam, oh Adam, uskun anta wa zawjukal jannah. I want you to dwell in heaven, but be careful of the devil. He is your enemy. Watch out about shaitan. Allah tells us he is your enemy. So how can we stay away from his plan? Allah says, by making sure we take him as an enemy and understand, do not obey the instructions of the devil. Never. Don't even turn towards them. Then Allah says, but... If for some reason, due to weakness, you have fallen, immediately turn to Allah. And Allah says, I will still wipe out your sins. Amazing. You know, going back to these computers since today, I don't know what made me start with that. When you have a computer and you format the hard drive, there is still software that can retrieve what has been formatted. There is still software that can retrieve what has been formatted. If you don't know, ask those who know. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out your sins, He makes the angels forget that you have committed that sin. He makes the walls forget that you have committed the sin. It is wiped out to the degree that there is no retrieval on condition that you were sincere. Ya Allah, forgive us. Ya Allah, grant us forgiveness. Ya Allah, we ask you, we plead with you. We are sinners, Ya Allah. Forgive us. Make us good people. Make us those who can obey your instruction, Ya Allah. Ameen. So Adam alayhi salatu was salam was in heaven and Iblis decided to come to him. How? Through deception. And this is the word, deception. Iblis uses deception. He comes and promises you things that are not really there. فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانُ قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَى Iblis came to Adam. Shaytan, the devil, he came to Adam and he said, O oh Adam, can I show you a way in which you will live forever? You eat from a certain tree, you will live forever. And you will have authority and provision that will never ever deplete. It won't be finished. Now naturally if I were to tell anyone here, or anyone was to tell me, that I can show you one method that you will live very long. Maybe we can't say live forever because we know we can't fool each other to that degree. But you will live very long and you will become the richest person and your money will not finish. I think we will have a queue of people. A queue of people. Maybe myself I would want to know what is being said there. Because naturally we are human beings. We want a good life and we want provisions in life. Who does not want good health and wealth? 
We all want health and wealth. Ya Allah, you grant us good health. Ya Allah, you grant us wealth. Ya Allah, you grant us sustenance. Ya Allah, open the doors of sustenance for those who are suffering. And Ya Allah, those who have it, grant them goodness so that they can achieve contentment through the sustenance they have. I mean. So, if the method of achieving that is wrong, we will not be from amongst those who will follow. But sadly, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, he fell prey to the Satan. And he looked at the tree and they ate. I don't want to debate who ate first, who ate second, was it his wife, was it him? Because we don't want an argument when we go home. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Some they say the women, they led the men astray. And some they say men, they led women astray. The reality is neither of us should be leading the other astray. That is the, the point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when they ate, immediately they, they were made to be people. Because of that shameless deed of disobedience, they had to cover their private parts that were covered before that automatically. Allah had covered it. How? Only He knows. But when it showed, they felt very shy. They felt that they needed cover. And they began to cover themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam anhakuma antilkuma shajara. But didn't I tell you not to eat from that particular tree? Wa aqullakuma inna shaytana lakuma aduwum mubeen. Didn't I tell you that shaytan is an open enemy against both of you? Obviously the answer was yes. You know, you told us, Ya Allah. But Adam alayhi salatu was salam was not arrogant. He was not full of pride. He made a mistake. And immediately he says, Rabbana zalamna anfusana. Oh Allah, we have wronged ourselves. We did wrong. What we did was wrong. And this helps us go back to the path of Allah. Wherever you have done wrong, admit your error. Admit it that I am wrong. Because to admit your fault is already half of the solution. Without admitting your error, you will never be able to say, I am sorry. Oh, Ya Allah, forgive me. If you are doing something wrong and you think it is right, it is worse than doing something wrong knowing that it is wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. So he says, Oh Allah, we have oppressed ourselves. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ if you are not going to forgive us, O oh our Creator, and if you are not going to have mercy on us, O oh our Creator, we will be the losers. We will be the losers. So what happened? Allah says, O oh Adam, we have forgiven you, but now you can go onto the earth, and now you can continue, you will live there, and there will be a battle and a struggle between you and Satan, and you can continue, whoever follows Satan from amongst you will be resurrected with him, and they will go to hellfire, and whoever wants to follow me, then they will go into paradise. So that is the whole plan here. When we are born as human beings, there are three forces that we are born with, according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The first is the soul. The soul is put into a body that does not belong to you, but it is known as you. Imagine, the soul is put into the body that is known as you, but the body does not belong to you. It is only a trust entrusted to you for the period of time that you are on the earth. That's all. Allah chooses what type of body you will have, the looks you have, the size you will have, and so on and so forth. But Allah is the one who even chose, subhanallah, what part of the world you will come out in, whether you will be here or there or wherever. But this body is just temporary. What we have is the soul in the center. That soul is us. It is us. Then there is something known as an angelic force. There is an angel. With every one of us, there is an angel. What is the duty of the angel? To guide us to the right path. To keep on trying to remind us, this is wrong, don't do it. This is right, you must go there. There is an angel guiding light. 
That force is either strong or weak, depending on how we have trained ourselves. If we listen to it, it becomes stronger. If we disregard it, it becomes weaker. When we listen to the angel more, it will be easy for us to read our salah. It will be easy for us to abstain from all the prohibitions. And when we do not listen to the angel, it becomes easy for us to abstain from salah. It will become easy for us to engage in sin. Because the third force is the qareen or the devil. Shaitan is also there. So what is the duty of shaitan? With every one of us, there is a devil. There is a Satan. The duty of the Satan is to serve his own godfather, who is Iblis himself. And Iblis's plan, he told his offshoots and offspring, that look, this is the plan. We want to deviate this man or this woman or this person from following Allah to following us and to worshipping one another from amongst them. So what happens? Iblis continues to tell us, or the devil continues to tell us when there is something bad. Don't worry. You know, it's adultery, but it's facilitated for you. What a beautiful woman. It's very easy. Get it done. Don't worry. Then you will see afterwards what is the issue. Don't worry. Right now it is there. But the angel is telling you, hey, there is a possibility of this and that. Watch out. Be careful. You are going to snatch the barakah away from your life. Allah has given you good life, good health. Allah has given, freed you from disease. You want to enter into something that you will be full of disease in and so on. When it comes to alcohol, you find something telling you inside you, don't drink it. Sometimes that force is so powerful that you will never consider drinking alcohol. But sometimes if you have drunk once, then you know the devil has won once. Next time he will say, come on, you did it last time. Wasn't it so good? You forgot your sins for, or you forgot your problems for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you went home thinking you were the president. You know, it reminds me of a true story. Or should I just say, I read it. They say in Pakistan, many years back, they, I won't name who the president was, but he was a president many, many years ago, when I was still very young. They say the president visited a mad hospital, so the mad hospital, when he entered there, and as he walked in, they said in Urdu, Ah, ek aur aya. Ek aur aya meaning one more has come. <laughs> so president said, Janta hu main kaun ho? Do you know who I am? You are, what are you saying? So they looked at each other and they said, Ah, every one of us said we were president when we came here. <laughs> So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from this. Shaitan, that is his plan. When you drink once, he starts telling you, yeah, you remember last time you drank, come on, you know, for at least for a little while you felt you were the president, you know. At least for a small while you felt this, that. So a person drinks again and again. Until they make tawbah to Allah and they turn to Allah and they clean their slate and they fight shaitan, you fight him once, twice, ten times, after that the angel becomes so powerful that you will be able to stay away from alcohol and adultery and casino just without even thinking. It will be so natural. This is why they say this is an evil person. No, I'm not pointing at anyone, I'm pointing at the ceiling. Eh? They say this is an evil person. Why? Because that person over a period of time does not do any good. And they say that man is very good. Why? Because over a period of time he does good. So we know that the, there is a struggle inside us. We need to fight the devil inside. This is why when we are going to Mina for Hajj, when we pelt the devil, there is no shaitan there in physical form. No. It is a shaitan from inside of you that you need to remove Bismillah or we say Allahu Akbar. And we pelt, meaning I am removing this devil from inside me, one bad quality, say the arrogance inside me, and I leave it here. There is a big shaitan, medium and small. Then the next pebble you are removing, you say, that adultery, I will never commit it again. It's gone out, you leave the devil there. The next one, eating of interest, I will never eat it again, it is gone. The third one, or the fourth one, we will say, for example, lying and cheating. I will never lie again. I will never cheat again. By the time you finish your hajj, 
you have already 49 or more of your bad habits which you left in Mina, you will return a pure person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Many people lose the whole essence of why we are going for Hajj. Yes, mashallah, they are. It's very important and we know, but sometimes we need to learn and study more. What is it am I supposed to be achieving by going to Mina? What am I supposed to be doing with this devil that I am pelting and so on? So the devil has his plan and he is working towards it. And Allah has his plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us. Whose plan do we choose? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. And may he grant us understanding. So... Shaitan promises many things. Like I told you moments ago, he promised Adam, you will live forever. He didn't live forever. He promised Adam, you will have kingdom, too much, too much money, everything, control, everything you will have. But that didn't be, that was not the case. Now what I want to say is, Adam alayhi salam obeyed Shaitan momentarily. He ate from the tree, but still what was pledged by Shaitan did not work. And this is why Allah says on the day of Qiyamah, there will be a debate between shaitan and those who followed shaitan. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا إِلَّا أَن دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Beautiful verses of the Qur'an. Allah says, when the matter will be resolved and Allah will judge between the people, Shaitan will say, hey, Allah promised you a truthful promise. Allah promised you a truthful promise. And I promised you a false promise. You decided to follow me. I didn't force you to follow me. So don't blame me. My promise to you was fake from the very beginning to the very end. Allah's promise was the truth. You decided to follow me. Now blame yourself. Go. Go into the fire. Allahu Akbar. Look at what shaitan is saying. And this is why Allah makes mention of these stories in the Qur'an of the time of Adam and even later on how shaitan tried to deviate people because Allah is showing us, look, he promised Adam something. Did it happen? It didn't happen. So if shaitan is promising us goodness, it, believe me, that goodness is not going to come to us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that shaitan is the one. Shaitan is the one who encourages us towards promiscuity and evil. Shaitan is the one who encourages us towards promiscuity and evil. And if we fulfill our salah on time and we make it a point to go to the masjid to fulfill our five salah, that alone will keep us away from evil and from immorality. How do we say this? Look at what Allah says. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Definitely salah itself prohibits a person from immorality and evil. Because when you need to be in wudu, and you need, you have a worry, I need to go to the next salah, the next salah I need to do. You are not going to engage in immoral deeds. No sexual misbehavior. You know I am in wudu, I need to go for salah. When you stand in front of Allah correctly, like I was saying today, I was mentioning to some of the brothers, that you know, when you go in sujood, my plea to everyone is the minimum some might be higher already, but the minimum, think to yourself whilst your head is on the ground, that my head is on the ground for the one who made it. And it will be difficult for you to get up. Can you ever put 
yourself in the position of prostration for any human being? The answer is no. So think for a moment when your head is on the ground that I am on the ground for the one who gave me eyes. Whoever gave me my nose, my mouth, my ears, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to make a dua in sajda. And he used to spend long time in sajda. He used to say, Sajada wajihihi lilladhi khalaqahu wa sawwarahu wa shakka sam'ahu wa basarahu bi hawlihi wa quwwatihi. My head is on the ground for the one who created it and who gave it its form, which means my identity. Who gave you your identity? Allah. You know how powerful that statement is? When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Do you see your brother? You see yourself. Unless it is a mirror that comes from some corner of China. May Allah protect us. No, there might be some sophisticated mirrors, only Allah knows. But if you look into a mirror, you will see yourself. Who said that that is you? Who said it's you? Allah decided that that is your form. It is your identity. You have an ID card with your face. Your iris print is different. No one had it from the time of Adam right up to the end. Your thumb print is different. No one had it from the time of the beginning to the end. Can I tell you there are many other things that are different. Your combination of organs on your face is totally different. You, you will find small differences if we look similar. Even if you say identical twins, they are not identical. To us, they might appear identical to the naked eye. But in reality, they are totally different. Let me tell you what else is different. Shave your head. The combination of how your hair grows is different from the time of Adam right to the end of time. Allah says, we gave you your identity. You run away with one thing, we catch you with another. Allahu Akbar. You run away with one thing, we catch you with another. So you cannot run away. It's amazing. So, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say in sajda, my head is on the ground for the one who created it, who gave it its form, and who created a beautiful, perfect hole in my ear so that I can hear. Imagine that hole, you know you have the hammer and stirrup inside the ear. You have that fluid in there which holds your balance and how it is such a hole that is so beautifully created by Allah you can hear amazing so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says my head is on the ground for the one who made that hole so perfectly that I can hear and for the one who slit my eye in such a perfect way that it's opened and I can see subhanallah with his power and his might. That was a dua in sajda. It is a sunnah dua for us to read. We should try and learn this dua. I am sure it is in the books of hadith. And it is in the books of dua. And we should try and understand the dua and make it in sajda. So this is what we are saying. That we put our heads on the ground for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept it from us. I was saying it is very important for us to know when we go down in sajda. That we are on the ground for the one who made us. That is the first step. The second step is understand what you are saying. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. I declare every form of praise and glorification to my Rabb. What is the meaning of Rabb? The one who created me, who has nourished me provided for me, who looks after me, who is in control of everything, he is the highest, Al-A'la. Now we should think of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So, shaitan, he, he encourages us to engage in immorality. So, before you are married, he wants you to commit adultery. And after you are married, he wants you to commit adultery again. So, look at what he does. Before you are married, he puts glasses on you, which no one can see, but there is spectacles. So when you see a person of the opposite sex, you incline towards them based on looks. Based on looks. 99% of the time it's based on looks. Then he tries to tell you, no, she is pious, look, she's wearing scarf. She is pious, look, she's wearing scarf. Then you quickly exchange numbers. Then you start coming, this is all shaitan. He wants to sow a seed of a cactus tree. 
What does that mean? How you started your road was wrong. Then what happens? You end up talking. You say, no, we are only chatting. It's only chat room. No, no. From chat room to this other, I don't know what they call this instant messaging. And what? No, don't worry. She's very, look, she's reminding me of my salah. What do you mean? That is Satan's plan. <laughs> Satan's plan from the side. She's reminding me. Are you sure? Make sure you read your salah. Do this. He said, no. How much Quran did you read today? But look who's talking to you. Allahu Akbar. How much Quran you read today? And the idea that you are hooked to that because of something beyond the reminder of Quran. Let's not fool ourselves. So shaitan is fooling us because he comes in disguise. He will come in the disguise of someone who is reminding you to do good. Then what happens? He makes you fall after that. When you fall because you are not married. Oh, it was so good. Hey, I enjoyed. We went out. We had coffee. We did this. We did that. Na'udhu billah. Whatever happened, happened. You say, when are we meeting again? Why? Because shaitan adds spice and pepper and he beautifies things. This happens. Then you say, no man, Some, somehow at night you felt something in you, the angel was telling you, don't do this. So you said, no, let me do nikah. I want to get married. So you go to your parents, and I'm just giving you a scenario, what happens in the world today. You go to your parents and you say, look, I need to get married, and you know, uh, this, uh, let me try, please, you know, this, what, whatever long story, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. You go through sometimes a very difficult road, the minute you get married... Shaitan's plan turns 180 degrees. Why? Now you are halal. He's angry with you. He's very angry. So immediately, first night, you come, you say, please make me a cup of tea. What? It's the first thing you are asking me to do. Are you crazy? We are on honeymoon. You're asking me to make you a cup of tea. That is Shaitan. Look. So now you got married for looks, but you didn't get married for cup of tea. Are you understanding my point? So if you tell her, but you need to cook, what are you talking about? I heard that Maulana saying, you must pay me if I cook for you. <laughs> yes. Now what happened? Shaitan now, he contaminates our minds. We no longer see our wives as beautiful. And sometimes maybe it's rosy for first week, two weeks, because Shaitan says, if I make husband and wife fight, that is the end of entire community. This is why in Surah Baqarah, Allah speaks of shaitans, one of his big plans. Allah says, وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ One of the plans, shaitan taught people how to split between husband and wife. How to cause problem between husband and wife. That is shaitan's plan. Because when husband and wife are fighting, you know what happens? The children are lost if there are any. If not, two big families are at war, community is at war, everybody is fighting with each other, we stop talking to each other. There, there is this disaster, that disaster, people start bad mouthing, back biting, back biting, shaitan loves it. Back biting is called worshipping the devil. So, so many different accusations are leveled against one another, it is called mud slinging. This mud slinging happening is part and parcel of the obedience of shaitan. And shaitan used this, or he used this divorce as the root of starting this type of backbiting and slander and rumor for the rest of our lives. And when there are children involved, there is a big problem and so on. This is why it's important when we choose our spouses, we don't pick up the phone to choose a spouse. That's not how you do it. Now there are some brothers scratching their heads here in front of me. If you have already done it, no problem, inshallah. Allah will grant you goodness. You just ask Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me for how I started. I have now learned the right way, but grant us mahabba and keep us away from shaitan. That is a dua. Because every time we speak, there are some people already, they did it. Someone might say, well, I did it that way. My marriage is working. Well, you are not the rule. You are the exception. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So if it has happened, it is not too late, like I said yesterday, it is never too late for a mu'min to rectify whatever bad has happened in the past. No problem. Turn to Allah, just say, Ya Allah, forgive me for how I did things. I was ignorant, I was, you know, I had that might of my youth days and I didn't know what I was doing. But Ya Allah, please, Ya Allah, do not punish me for my bad deeds. Forgive me totally. Ya Allah, forgive us all. Amen. 
So this is what happens. And this is why when we start asking for a cup of tea and so on, what happens? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. I want to tell you a worse scenario. Person gets married, mashallah, happily. Parents are happy, this side happy, that side happy, everyone happy. After that, the person sees, now I need to have children. You see, I need to have children. So when you get children normally, the physique of a woman changes. It changes to the degree that Allah loves her more than before she gave birth. But sometimes the man, he is addicted to television or to the internet. Sometimes sadly to some bad websites. And sometimes sadly to some bad channels. And whole day he is watching other women. For what? Why? Why are we watching other women? What shaitan does, he comes to us in disguise. Those women you are watching will not make you a cup of tea. They won't. But the one you have sitting at home, Wallahi, she will make not one meal, but ten meals for you. Still we deviate from them. Still we turn away from them. We say, no man, you know now you are getting fat, you know you are eating too much. Look at this, look at how you are looking now. Aren't you ashamed of your... Astaghfirullah. How can we utter those... Who impregnated her? It was you. When she has marks on her belly... Instead of kissing those marks to say it was through this that Allah decided to provide me with children. There are others who are crying without children for 10 years and 20 years. Instead of that, we begin to deviate and drift elsewhere. And when we go elsewhere, Wallahi, that is the plan of shaitan. Soon we will regret and come licking our wounds. By that time it might be too late. And then you come home and say, look, I'm very sorry. No, I don't want any. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Now we have a problem. You know, I am a marriage counselor myself. When we satisfy the husband, the wife is not happy. When we satisfy the, the wife, by that time the husband is already tired. So it becomes difficult. Look, we see shaitan's plan working. Because we are weak. We have left our salah. We have left our Quran. We are reading Toshiba books for HP laptops. It's a fact. And I'm giving you that example because it's so true. So this needs to end. We need to recognize shaitan. Do you know that when you abstain from sin, it gives you a different spiritual boost? One man once asked, that why is it that Allah created the pig when he didn't want us to eat the pig? It's a good question, isn't it? Why is it that Allah created the pig when he did not want us to eat it? Now, the answer to that is, there are certain instructions. Allah tells you to do certain things. When you do certain things the way Allah wants, it develops a certain part of your spirituality. Then Allah tells you, I want you to abstain from certain things. When you abstain from certain things, it develops another part of your spirituality. So to create the holistic part or the holistic spirituality upliftment, Allah has do's and don'ts. Like, for example, in an examination of mathematics, they won't only ask you questions of addition. They will ask you also subtraction. So if someone only asks you addition, addition, you might be a good mathematician of addition. But if someone asks you addition and subtraction, you will now be a holistically mathematician. I hope you're understanding what we're saying. So there is a different boost that we get when we abstain. So Allah says, I have created certain things that are not for you in order for you to abstain so that you can develop yourself. Why? Because life is all about self-control. Everything in your life is about self-control. It is known as sabr. Sabr has many different interpretations. It does not mean patience alone. It means restraint. It means self-control. It means the power required to engage in goodness. And the power required to abstain from evil. And the power required to go through calamity. All this is known as sabr. So this is why... When we say life is all about self-control, you control your nafs, your soul. Control it by getting up early morning for salah. And this is why the Quran says, when you want to fight shaitan, make wudu. Wash yourself with water. 
Cool water. Cold water is better than hot water. وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَلِّ يُطَهِّرَكُمْ بِهِ وَيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ رِجِزَ الشَّيْطَانِ Allah says we sent water. This was during one of the battles. But the, the lesson is for all of us. We sent water from the skies. We sent water from the skies. In order for you to cleanse yourselves. And for that the wrong thoughts and feelings of laziness to be extracted from you. And to be able to tackle the devil. Naturally, if we are to apply that verse to us today, and it is applicable, we will find that when you make wudu, already shaitan starts to go away. Shaitan massages you in the morning not to get up for Salatul Fajr. Hey, come on, man. You know, now there are only 15 minutes left. Where are you are going to get up? Come on. Just sleep. Relax. Tomorrow. No, no problem. Don't worry. Tomorrow. You'll get up tomorrow. And if we get up still, when we are sitting up, shaitan comes. No, just lie down. Just go back again. Just a little bit. Just for two minutes. Don't worry. The clock, you won't, you won't miss. Don't worry. You're not going to miss. But when you get up, the minute you put water on your face, shaitan is no longer there. Nobody that I know, and I have asked many people, has washed their face for wudu and stopped at that point. No one. Not one. I still have to, if there is anyone, you can inform me. The minute you wash your face for wudu, shaitan is gone. He knows now this one is now, I, I can go away now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us purity through water also. That is the power of water. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us recognition of shaitan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shaitan beautifies that which is prohibited. Beautifies. Zuyina linnasi hubbu shahawati minan nisa'i wal banina wal qanatiri al the verse is longer, but let us stop there. Allah says, Certain things have been made to be seeming to be beautiful for mankind. And shaitan generally uses these things in order to deviate man. One of them is the opposite sex. Especially for the men, women. They forget about their own women and they want to look at others. They forget about the sacrifice that their own women have made for them. And they want to run away to others who will not do anything for them. A lot of the time, you have people who engage in haram relations. Those haram relations, what they will do for you is remove the blessings from your life. Your wealth will disappear. Your contentment will disappear. You are living on edge every moment. My phone, where is my phone? My phone, I need my phone. Why? Brother, throw that phone one side. Don't worry. You must be a man who lives content. Here is your phone. Everybody knows it is here. Your son wants to use it, no problem. Take it. Your wife wants to use it, no problem. Take it. If you have that type of relation, inshallah, you are doing nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. The question is how many are doing that? That's the question. Allah, we need to ask ourselves, where are we heading? I think a lot of people are very, very conscious of their phones from those who are the closest to them. That means there must be something wrong. What are you hiding? Remember, you can hide from everyone, not from Allah. And you know this thing, it will not lead you to any way good. It will go deeper and deeper until one day it will explode. Cut it today. Recognize your enemy. Imagine your enemy is telling you, come. You know, it is like animals walking to a slaughterhouse. We now, recently we had Eid al-Adha. You have animals sometimes, when they walk alone, they give you a problem. So what do you do? You need to keep five, six, seven of them and you need to move them together. They move quickly. They think we are going to something good. And you know, sadly, sometimes you find the shepherd is showing them green, green, you know. They are showing them green leaves and they are busy eating and coming and eating and coming. They don't know there is a knife waiting that side there. Shaitan does the same to us. 
He leads us with green, green. We see a pretty woman moving and we run behind her and we are going and one year and two years and so on. It is going to come to the point of the knife one day. We, shaitan is driving us to the slaughterhouse. We don't understand that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He make us those who realize, you know, I have come here from very, very far. Believe me, extremely far. And it's not a coincidence that I'm speaking to you. Allah planned it a long, long time ago that I was going to stand here and talk to you. And it's amazing how, mashallah, we have thousands of people here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts in the heart what to say. A lot of the times I don't plan the details of what is to be said. The details come as it is. And this is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted us to meet. I told you the reason I am here and wallahi I'd like Allah to bear witness and to help me also in this is solely to share the beauty of our religion with you so that we can all together become better people. We can lead a better life. So this is why we say sometimes we are being driven to the slaughterhouse by the devil and we don't realize that. Like for example a man going to casinos, very wealthy, and he might be going to casinos and he will win once. Satan says, hey, you see I won, I won, and my name was in the newspaper, okay? The next time you lost three times more than you won, you see? And the following time your house is gone, and next thing this is gone and that is gone, sadly sometimes we have to give as collateral or as surety some of our own property, the basics, when we become involved in bad habits. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from gambling. Very big sin, very big crime. You know, there was once a man. He was Muslim standing in the queue. Standing in the queue to play what is known as lotto. I don't know if you have it here. Lotto, lottery. And they pay one dollar, two dollars and... He told me, I am paying. I said, brother, you are Muslim, you, are, you know me, I know you. Why do you do this? I want to understand it. He tells me, because I might win one day, and I will win a lot of money. I said, okay, I want to explain to you. How long have you been playing for? You know what he told me? 35 years. 35 years. I told him, how much money? It's a true story. He said, I play every week. He plays worth... Ten dollars every week. Okay. How many weeks are in the year? Fifty-two. Five hundred and twenty dollars. Multiplied by ten years, five thousand two hundred. Am I right? Multiplied by three to make it thirty years. How much do we get? We get close on to fifteen thousand, between fifteen and twenty thousand. I told him, your prize was only going to be ten thousand. If you were going, if you were going to save the money, wallahi, you would be able you would be able to use it in a better way. The brother was not convinced. Open relation. He told me, no, I'm still going to play. I said, okay. I want to show you something else. I have done research. And I challenge all of you seated here. Do the same research. All those who have won more than a million dollars, their lives are finished. All of them. 100% of them. I have studied one by one in the whole globe. Or as many as I could. In England, there was someone who won 50 million pounds. His life is finished, his wife left him and everybody has gone and he lost everything and he is now suffering heart disease because of too much drinking. And he does, he is bankrupt. And there was another one who won so many million, the life is over. There might be some newly, you know, those who won recently, they might be happy for 5 or 10 years. Wait, just wait, the honeymoon is not yet over. Why? Because that is haram money from shaitan himself. Imagine shaitan is paying you to go to the slaughterhouse. And he's telling you, come on, spend, and spend, enjoy. Life is not about false enjoyment. We want to enjoy in the true sense of enjoyment. Allah says, وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا Eat and drink, enjoy yourself. وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا But don't be extravagant. You must know there are rules. You want to marry, marry, alhamdulillah. Do it properly, do it correctly. You want to do something, do it properly. Don't blackmail people. Don't cheat people. Don't deceive people. These are all the traps of the devil. He promises you the glamour and the glitter of this world. Another very interesting thing in the same verse that I read is the issue of materialism. 
Shaitan makes us very material. You know how material he makes us? When we see flashy things, we say, I need that. I want that. Oh, I need this. So we work in life in order to buy a phone. Imagine. People are sweating morning to evening. More. As soon as they get their salary, I need the iPhone. Fourth generation. I need the iPhone. Okay, you got the iPhone. But can you afford to pay the bill for the iPhone? That is a question. There are certain people I know of back in my country. They have purchased big Mercedes Benz. Each time they give it for a service, it is equivalent to one Corolla, one Toyota Corolla. So, they rather buy Toyota Corolla. Wallahi, because they don't have money to service. So, shaitan made them attracted to that which is glamorous. Why must we run behind trends? Let me inform you. Another plan of shaitan is to make us run behind material items such as the brands and the names that we have. Sometimes you have a shirt, and it says on the shirt, Visaki. But that man is a gay. You are promoting him in the masjid. Everybody sees man with big beard, mashallah, he's wearing topi. Look how shaitan came to him. He says, Samia Allah, liman hamida. And at the back it says, Visaki. Big. What is that? Who is Gucci? Do you know who he is? Who is Calvin Klein? Who are these people? We don't even know them. Look at how shaitan comes to us. We don't know who they are. It is better for me to wear Chinese clothing, I promise you. Without a name. I don't need a name. I, I just need to cover myself with something smart. I am not saying it is wrong to buy designer clothing. But it is wrong to follow the trends blindly and to buy things you cannot even afford. That is wrong. Because today people are poor, but you find Carrera glasses, mashallah, this man is wearing Carrera. Now why? Because people must see what I have. But you don't have it, you are lying to them. The only thing you can afford is Carrera glasses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Wallahi, this is how shaitan is destroying our lives. The youth are being led astray because we need the latest phone. Every time there is another phone, now I want that one. So now we beg, borrow or steal. You know that, that terminology. In order to get it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. We shouldn't be doing this. Especially the young girls and women folk. Subhanallah, I have seen a trend not in this country, but in other countries where they will put so much pressure on the husband and father to say, no, 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 I need this. Look, my friends, they all have that. I need it. Wallahi, in their families, they have no contentment, no happiness. You also want that? May Allah grant us happiness. Wear something simple and effective. Wear something that will be yourself. You don't need to copy the rest. Leadership and part of leadership is to be original. You don't need to be fake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Another very, very extremely dangerous path of the devil is the issue of drugs. You know, I normally tell people, please don't even smoke a cigarette. Don't smoke even a cigarette. A cigarette sometimes will lead from one thing to another. There was some family, one uncle asked me, he said, look, there is a certain boy, he has proposed for my daughter. And I want to know, you, you have come, you have met him a few times, is he good or not? I said, look, uncle, I cannot tell you if someone is good or not, I don't know. But, does he smoke? If he smokes, don't give your daughter. He told me, what? I smoke? I said, I am telling you of the new generation. If he smokes, don't give your daughter. But why? I said, okay, if he really wants your daughter, let him give up smoking. He told me, why? I said, okay, you are asking me, no problem. You can do as you please. Anyway, one year later, they came back to me, marriage was broken. The boy was on drugs, so severe drugs, it was all disguised by cigarette. He told the girl, I'm, I only have one bad habit, I smoke. And she fell for it. And I smoke one and a half packs a day. You know, that is like maybe 30, 45 cigarettes a day. That is a chimney. My chimney back at home has one fire in the whole year. <laughs> so he is smoking, smoking, but that was a disguise. It took her some time to pick up that this man is not normal. But didn't I warn you? I didn't say he was a bad boy, but his qualities are bad. 
People are good. Shaitan is bad. All people are good. The devil is bad. But we need to recognize the devil and fight the devil. This is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even the kuffar of Makkah who troubled him and harassed him, when they wanted to listen to Quran a little bit, he would quickly go. Because he hated the kufr in them, not them. He had hope in them, but he knew the devil is bad. People are good, the devil is bad. So with us also, we need to realize this. And we need to understand. Let us give up our bad habits. Don't even smoke. And for those who are on drugs, it is about time we gave it up. Because it starts off with a small marijuana, they call it. It's a little plant. Sometimes, one day I saw a man with a big beard. He told me, no, 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 this is just a herb. Herb. Well, I call it what you want. It is a drug. Don't say herbs. Just because you have a beard does not mean it is a herb. Wallahi. Otherwise we will fold your beard and use it also as herb. <laughs> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Shaitan does not know any age or he does not know any inclination. He wants to attack everybody. Everybody. This is why I want to mention a very powerful hadith. The Prophet sallallahu says, Atadruna man al-muflis. It is a hadith we need to repeat every day. Do you know who is the bankrupt person? The Sahaba said, yes, a bankrupt person is one who has no money. No coins, no, no silver, no gold. In our terminology, no dollars, no pounds, nothing. That is bankrupt. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, no, that is not what we are referring to. A bankrupt person is the one who comes on the day of Qiyamah with a lot of salah. Listen, a lot of salah, a lot of zakah, a lot of charities, a lot of good deeds, plenty good deeds. But... He has backbitten about this one, so some of his deeds go there. He cheated that one, so some of his deeds go there. He slandered that one, so the deeds go there. He ate the money of that one, so some of the deeds go there. And he usurped some right of that person, but his deeds are finished. His good deeds are finished, they were already given to some. Now, the evil deeds of that person come onto him. And the evil deeds of the other one come unto him. So he came with hajj, with salah, with zakah, with good deeds. And he is going with zina and adultery and backbiting and slander and so on into Jahannam. This hadith is a warning for those who think they are pious. Who think shaitan doesn't come to them. Shaitan comes to the pious double strength than those who are weak. Because he makes us think for a moment, no, I am okay. My salah is first self. Then as we are walking out of the masjid, we say, you see that man, he is a very bad man. You know what he did today? That is called backbiting. That salah we read before we exited the masjid, the reward of that salah is already gone to a man whom we considered a drunkard. Imagine. Look at this. So we need to be careful. There is one Palestinian doctor where I come from. He told me recently, he came back from Hajj, or he came back from Palestine. And he told me, dear brother, I don't like to talk about anybody. Why? Because my deeds are very dear to me. I don't want to donate them for free to everybody else. Imagine, listen to this. It's a powerful statement. My deeds are very dear to me. To read your salah is easy. To look after it is ten times more difficult. That is why the Quran says, and I, I know I mentioned this the last time I came to Colombo. Whoever comes on the day of Qiyamah with the good deeds intact, that will be multiplied by ten. Allah didn't say, you do a good deed, I will multiply it immediately. No, do a good deed, look after it, and then you will come. You will, it will be multiplied for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, shaitan, we need to really look at how he is coming to us in our lives. He comes to us also in the form of changing the way we think. He contaminates us. Contaminates our thinking. So that we simply don't see what is right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا Should we inform you of those who have the worst of the wasted deeds? 
الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا Those who do deeds that are astray thinking that they are on the right path. So their mind is contaminated. They do what they think is right. Yet they cannot see the light because shaitan has taken control of them. They have allowed shaitan to hold the reins that are controlling them and to ride them and steer them into the wrong direction. And they are pro- proceeding in that way. How does this happen? Firstly, with the wrong company, bad friends. So, when you are in the company of those who smoke, you are in the wrong company. Or, if you are, I'm giving, you know, a broad example. Sometimes if all of you are smokers, then it means that we all need to deal with ourselves in a positive manner. We need to discourage each other from smoking so much. You need to cut down. So say for example you are 10 friends, all of you are smoking 20 a day. You need to tell each other, look we need to cut down to 10 a day, 5 a day, 2 a day. And you need to compete with each other in goodness because Allah says, فَاسْتَبِقُ khayrat. You must compete with each other when it comes to goodness. Bad company is such that it changes the way you think. Just by your presence with those people. So get away from them. If you find you are evil, you are not happy, you have some bad thoughts, maybe the people you are mixing with are wrong. Try and find others who will be good for you. Stay away, go on to your own for a while. May Allah open our doors for us. Wallahi. You know, company is so important, so important. It can make a person or break a person. If you want, and I'm seeing a lot of young people here. Wallahi, it is your... time to choose who you would like to grow up with. This is why Allah says in the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that there are seven categories of people who will be granted the shade on the day of qiyamah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them is وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى A youngster who grew up In the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his slate is clean from the very beginning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us clean slates. Because as you grow up, if you are in the right company, automatically, when they go to the masjid, you will go to the masjid with them. Those are your friends. But if they go to the club and you go to the club with them, you will be led astray. So company is extremely important. Secondly, the media. Today the media plays a very big role in confusing us. There are people who control the whole world through the media. They own most of the media houses. They control what you see and what you hear. When there is no problem in Sri Lanka, the whole world will think that the place is such a dump full of disaster, full of war, full of problems, only because of what the media is portraying to them. And you have no choice in that regard. When Zimbabwe was going through a, a crisis, more of an economic nature, people thought that we are coming from the bush. And then when those who visit the country tell us that, oh, it is such a beautiful place, Not like what the media is saying. Then they learn that there is a difference between listening and witnessing on your own. Sometimes you can witness news. I will give you an example. Many years ago, one of the British channels wanted to portray an image of hunger in a certain country. So they desperately wanted to portray an image of hunger and chaos. So they took 50 pounds, you know 50 British pounds is a lot of money, a lot of money. And they threw it in the bin, in the middle of the street where everyone is watching. Naturally, what would happen here in Sri Lanka? The same thing happened there. The same thing would happen everywhere else. People began to run towards the bin in order to try and get the 50 pound note. Meanwhile, they were videoing, saying people are scavenging the bin. People are scavenging the bin, there is no food. People, people with suits and ties are also going into the bin, so on. <laughs> then, 
the people who watch this news, they believe it because they tell you, Are, what are you telling me? I saw it with my eyes. They were in, digging the bin. What are you talking about? But you don't know the history behind how they shot the movie. I always tell people that, you know, Hollywood, if you have watched a movie from Hollywood, it looks so real, yet there is no truth behind it at all. They created the film from beginning to end. It looks so real. You are trying to tell me that they cannot create few pieces of news to fool me and you. I hope you understand what we are saying here. If they can create a three hour movie to fool us all, it feels so real. I have seen people crying, well, like crying when they are watching movies. And I tell them, but brother, that is tomato sauce. <laughs> yes, they are crying for tomato sauce. Wallahi. It looks so real. So you are telling me that they can't fool us with a 10 minute clip, 5 minute clip. They are fooling us every day. Believe me, we are being fooled. That is why we are taught in the Quran that, you know, there are certain things you don't even need to know. You can say, yes, I know there is something going on in Zimbabwe, for example, but I don't know the details. I've just heard some details, maybe right, maybe wrong. That is the correct attitude. Unless you hear it firsthand from someone who is living there. If I come to Sri Lanka, they warned me before I came the first time. Watch out, very dangerous place. Anytime anything can happen. Wallahi, I've come here. I was thinking, subhanallah, it is such a beautiful place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this country. May He grant you peace and stability and serenity and security. And may He grant flourishing for everyone in every form of goodness. Amen. So, shaitan comes to us by controlling the way we think. So, sometimes we look at the Quran and we think, you know, this is not... Astaghfirullah. Uh, this is not just. How can this be the case? How can Allah say this? How can we question the Creator? When now we think we have intellect. And I want to say something very openly and clearly. I am not a politician. But when you study what the worldly law has brought to the countries that it is applied in. Take a look at the United States. It has the largest number of rape cases, the largest number of kidnappings, the largest number of murders, the largest number of robberies, the largest number of crime, the largest number of corruption. So much is happening there, yet they claim our law is the best. The law has failed. It's about time you adopt something else. Take a look at the chaos that is caused in so many places because the law is corrupt. But we are forced to learn the law believing that it is the only law out. It is the only civilized way forward. Subhanallah. It is applied and failed. There are other laws that are applied and they have passed already. But because your corruption cannot continue with these laws, you will downgrade them. That is the plan of the devil. As I was saying, shaitan. The point I'm making is, we need to be careful when we see something, not everything that glitters is gold. Remember that. Not everything that seems to be coming from an intellectual angle is correct. So many scientific discoveries have been modified over years until it comes to what the Quran has said. Wallahi, it's a fact. So many scientific discoveries have modified, have been modified until it comes finally to what Muhammad, peace be upon him, has said. Recently there was discovery, not very recently, but some time back, that the fingers also secrete a certain enzyme and digestion of the food begins when you touch your food with your fingers. Subhanallah. There is research in that regard. Whereas we were taught at school that it starts with your teeth, with your mouth. Open your mouth and it starts there. Okay. It changed over time. I want to give you another example of how we become fooled when they tell you who discovered America? What do we say? Christopher Columbus. I think, is that the right answer? It's supposed to be. I heard many yeses here. What about the human beings who were living there before that? What about them? I know in Zimbabwe when they say, who discovered Victoria Falls, 
If they ask you that question in history, you have to ride David Livingstone. Even though there are people I have met, they told me my great-grandfather was living here before David Livingstone even came here. But I can't put his name. The minute I put his name, I won't get my certificate. So you are forced to lie, knowing that you are lying. Imagine. And the whole world is made to believe that. Allahu Akbar. Look at how we have been modified over time to believe that this thing is right and this thing is wrong. We need to be careful. Whatever Allah has revealed is right. And it will never be wrong. Even if the world feels that this is like this or like that. Maybe we need to understand it correctly. We are Muslims, we are not implementing it correctly. Maybe we have not understood it properly, some, some of us. Maybe we need to learn more about it. But it is never wrong. Let's understand this. If Allah has shown you a path, it is the path of success. And if there is another path, it is always the path of failure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. It is also very, very important for us to make dua. That Allah protect us from shaitan. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ Allah instructs the messenger to say, O messenger, you must always say, O Allah, O my Rabb, protect me from the whispers of the devil. All of us need to read that dua. O Allah, protect me from the whispers of the devil. Because definitely what happens is, if we are not protected from the whispers of the devil, he keeps on whispering. When he whispers once, twice, three times, four times, we tend to deviate. This is why when we are reading Quran, how do we start? What do we say before we read the Quran? A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim. I seek Allah's protection. I seek Allah's protection from shaytan, the condemned. Because we are about to read the most important message in existence. The message of the one who created us. We cannot allow the contamination of the devil whilst we are reading. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors and to grant us goodness. It's important also for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a special place, a special place in hellfire for those who want to follow the devil. We are lucky. We are very fortunate. We say, La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We utter the shahada. We say that there is no one worthy of worship besides Allah. We falter. We go astray. And Allah tells us, for as long as you come back on the path, as soon as possible, you are heading in the right direction. You are heading in the right direction. But there are some who worship the devil. I'm not talking of Muslimin. I'm talking of people, human beings. They worship the devil. We should pray that Allah protect our offspring and our progeny. You know when you are young, sometimes you don't see the light very quick because of the energy. But as you grow old, you get your child, you get your children, you start getting your children married. Then you scratch your head and you say, you know, I should have been a better person. People start turning to religion, older age. Why don't we start from now, young age? See the fruit it will bear for you. It will head you in the right direction. Like the example I was giving to some of the sisters, I told them, I said, you know, when you dress in a way that you want to be attractive so that everybody can see you, the young boy who will be attracted to you, who might finally marry you, was attracted to your miniskirt and your jeans. Then the day you get married to him and you are living with him, and you decide, I want to now adopt the way of my Rabb and my Creator, and I want to become religious, he will say, no, this is not the woman I married. I married a woman in jeans and in miniskirts, for example. So it's important if we are dressed properly from day one, the one who is attracted to us will be the one looking with the correct eyes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. And if someone comes up to you as a young girl to say, you know what, I am interested in getting married to you, immediately tell them, please contact my father. Done. If he is serious, he will go. If he was only one of those who are playing games, he will chicken out. Immediately. Or you say, can you contact my elder brother, please. Do not entertain the discussion further because we will be wearing the glasses of shaitan. Shaitan will show us, oh, that man, but he is Hafizul Quran. I want to tell you something. 
When a person is Hafizul Quran, they are not immune to drugs and alcohol and other sins. They are, other, they are ordinary human beings. It is only the one who is Hafiz, who protects that Quran, who will be saved. Someone who looks after it, reads it on a daily basis, makes sure that he is not found in the wrong places. What was he doing talking to you in the first place? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He forgive us. We are human beings. We falter. We fall. We stand up again. We ask Allah to forgive us. We falter again. We, we lose the road sometimes, but we need to constantly look at that road map and move further and further. You know, nowadays, when you tell someone, look at the map, they tell you, no, I have GPS. I have GPS. Then, recently, someone gave me a GPS. I was using it and I found the voice of a male. Now, this is obviously on a lighter note. Please, no offense to our sisters. I found the voice of a male. And for some reason, I felt that the directions he was giving me were more, you know, accurate. So the brother told me, you have a software here where there is male voice. How did you get it? I said, I don't know. It's new. He told me, please, try and send it to my device as well. I will take it and get it. He couldn't. So when we jumped into his vehicle once, oh, we went through some long routes. There was a lady instructing us, go here, go there, take this way, turn left, take U-turn now, come back, you know. So I just commented, I said, you know, there is a problem here. What's the problem? I said, maybe you are interested more in the voice than in the instructions. He said, no, but she is giving us wrong instruction. So my brother from the back said, no, man, you know, women, they like sightseeing. She wants to show you all the different places in the city. That's why we are going around. We will come back just now. Don't worry. You know, so you must know where all the shopping centers are, where everything is. Subhanallah. We would like a straight path. We want to enter Jannah. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Allah says, this is my straight path, follow it. Don't follow the paths on the side because they will lead you astray from my straight path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. I have said a little bit, few words of advice for the young. I told you for the youth, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to swim deeper in knowledge. My words are only words of encouragement. Wherever I have uttered something hard, forgive me. My intention is never to hurt someone. It is always to try and raise a point. Sometimes the point is understood, sometimes it is not understood. Whatever we have taken in terms of goodness from what I've said, build on it. If there is something we felt that was not so positive in our particular case, then you don't have to build on it. But inshallah, the message of Allah and His Messenger is always strong. And it is something we need these reminders. We promise Allah that we will turn. We promise Allah we will try and identify shaitan. We will recognize him. We will not allow him to come on to our backs and to control us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali nabiyina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim. Ya Allah, you are our creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer. Ya Allah, you are the owner. Ya Allah, you made us. You made us. Ya Allah, you created us. We will return to you. Ya Allah, we are totally at your disposal. We are under your control. You control every single aspect of our existence. Ya Allah, bless us all and forgive us tonight, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us from the devil, Ya Allah. Keep him away from us and keep us away from him, Ya Allah. Forgive us wherever we have faltered, Ya Allah. We have made so many wrong decisions in life, Ya Allah, forgive us. Ya Allah, grant us a new beginning, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, don't hold against us whatever wrong we have done in the past, Ya Allah. Forgive us. We know that whenever we raise our hands to you, you wipe out our sins, Ya Allah. You love to forgive, so forgive us, Ya Allah. You are most merciful, most forgiving, Ya Allah. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Forgive our offspring, forgive our sisters, our brothers, Ya Allah, our relatives, our communities, and the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Allah. Those who have passed away as well, forgive them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us all forms of goodness, Ya Allah. Use us to serve the deen, Ya Allah. 
Ya Allah, the owners of this venue, Ya Allah, grant them barakah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant them barakah in their lives, in their health, in their families, and in all their affairs, Ya Allah. And grant the same to every single one of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, all those who have assisted to make this trip a reality, Ya Allah, grant them every form of goodness in their families, in their homes, in their health, Ya Allah, in their wealth, in all their affairs, Ya Allah. And grant us all the same, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you the blessings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bless him, Ya Allah. Bless us all, Ya Allah. We ask you to bless him and to bless us all, Ya Allah. You are the owner of blessings, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us happiness in this life and contentment, Ya Allah. Grant us barakah, blessings, Ya Allah. Protect our children, Ya Allah. Protect our marriages, Ya Allah. Keep us happy in our marriages, Ya Allah. Make us people who can learn to abide by your command, Ya Allah. Help us to surrender to your instruction at all times, Ya Allah. Make us people who can spend time and effort to learn your word, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us from those who can spend time to learn the Qur'an, Ya Allah. And the Sunnah, Ya Allah. And what this deen has to say, Ya Allah. The beautiful religion, Ya Allah. Help us to learn it, Ya Allah. We know that the more we learn, the more convinced we are, Ya Allah. The less we know, the more guilty sometimes we feel, Ya Allah. The more prone we are to the devil, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us from the devil, Ya Allah. Grant us knowledge, Ya Allah, in such a way that it will grant us the ability and give us the ability to, to identify the devil, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us make the correct decisions in life, Ya Allah. In marriage, help us make the correct decisions, Ya Allah. In our lives, help us make the correct decisions. For our children, help us make the correct decisions, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us resolve our disputes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we know that one of the plans of shaitan is to destroy families, Ya Allah. Help us to mend our relations, Ya Allah. Help us to come forth and love one another for your sake, Ya Allah. Help us to dress appropriately, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help our women folk to dress appropriately, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help them to dress in hijab, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help our men folk, Ya Allah, to be attracted to their own spouses, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help our men folk to be attracted to their spouses, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, help our women folk as well to be a means of comfort and peace to their spouses, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, let our women folk be a means of comfort and peace in our homes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect us from the devil, Ya Allah. We promise you we will not sin, Ya Allah. We promise you we will not sin, Ya Allah. Protect us from sin, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we don't want to sin, Ya Allah. Shaitan is on our backs, Ya Allah, trying in every way. Protect us from him, Ya Allah. Remove him from our backs, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us so we can read our salah five times a day. Ya Allah, help us to get up for Salatul Fajr. We are indeed lazy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, sometimes we feel so lazy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us and forgive us from that laziness, Ya Allah. Help us to fulfill our duties towards you, Ya Allah. Make us people with lots of patience, Ya Allah. Make us people, Ya Allah. Make us people who are always obedient to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us people who can speak only those words which will put smiles on others' faces, Ya Allah. Protect us from bad words. Protect us from vulgar language, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are guilty. Sometimes we use very bad language on our own family members, Ya Allah. Forgive us for that and safeguard our tongues, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we will make an effort to protect our tongues, Ya Allah. But without your help, we will not be able to do it. So please help us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to lower our gaze, Ya Allah. Help us in every way, beautify us, Ya Allah. Grant us nur on our faces, Ya Allah, on the day of Qiyamah. Ya Allah, resurrect us with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, beautify us to the degree that our spouses are attracted to us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us the intercession of Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the day of Qiyamah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, resurrect us with those who are pious, those who are good, and those who are prophets, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, be pleased with us, Ya Allah. Accept our efforts in your cause, Ya Allah. And accept the efforts of all those who are struggling in your cause, Ya Allah. And use us all to struggle in your cause, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us self-control. Ya Allah, grant us self-control, Ya Allah. Grant us restraint, Ya Allah. Grant us restraint from evil, Ya Allah. And grant us self-control at all times, Ya Allah. Make us disciplined people, Ya Allah. Forgive our shortcomings, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive our shortcomings, Ya Allah. We ask you to have mercy on us, Ya Allah. Bless us all, Ya Allah. Grant this country goodness, Ya Allah. Grant its people goodness and peace, Ya Allah. Grant it leadership that will be good, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, and grant, make, make pure its leadership, Ya Allah. And Ya Allah, make it easy 
for this country, Ya Allah, in every single way, in every aspect of goodness, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, improve the economy of the country, Ya Allah. Improve the situation, Ya Allah, of this country, of the people of the country, Ya Allah. Grant them contentment, Ya Allah. Grant them blessings in their wealth, in their health, Ya Allah. Grant them blessings and peace in their families, Ya Allah. Contentment in their communities, Ya Allah. Safeguard us all, protect us all, Ya Allah. Protect the leadership of this country and protect the country, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, safeguard it from war and calamity, Ya Allah. Safeguard it from flooding and earthquaking, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to safeguard all our lands, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant peace on the globe, Ya Allah. Grant us peace and mercy on the globe, Ya Allah. Safeguard us from warfare and warmongers, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect us from the devil, Ya Allah. Protect us from the evil plot of the evildoers, Ya Allah. Protect us from the mischief of the mischief makers, Ya Allah. Help us leave our bad habits, Ya Allah. We promise you we will quit our bad habits, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us quit our bad habits, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those who make false and empty promises to us, help us identify those people, Ya Allah. And help us identify those type of promises, Ya Allah. And let us never fall prey to such people and such promises, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, keep us with the good, Ya Allah. Give us good company. Help us to be in the company of those who are pious and those who are good, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to fulfill the needs of everyone who is seated here, for indeed every one of us has different needs, Ya Allah. Those who are listening in to this program, Ya Allah, and those who will hear it later on, Ya Allah, we all have different needs, different difficulties, different issues, different problems we are going through, Ya Allah. Have mercy on all of us, Ya Allah. Create ease for all of us, Ya Allah. Improve our lives, our, our health, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we thank you so much for whatever you have given us, Ya Allah. You have given us the best of postures, Ya Allah. You have given us the best of everything, Ya Allah. You have given us noses and eyes and ears and hair, Ya Allah. And you have given us such goodness, Ya Allah. We are sometimes so ungrateful, but today, Ya Allah, we are thanking you. Ya Allah, we thank you and make us people who are thankful, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us obedient slaves of yours. Help us abstain from intoxicants and alcohol, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect our children and offspring and our family members and our communities from drugs, Ya Allah. Protect us from gambling and all bad habits, Ya Allah. Protect us from all forms of evil. Protect us from jealousy and hatred, Ya Allah. Help us, Ya Allah, to respect the ulama, Ya Allah. Help us to respect those who are carrying the deen, Ya Allah. And help us learn a thing or two from them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, protect the masajid of this country, Ya Allah. Protect the madaris of this country, Ya Allah. And protect all those who are struggling and striving to protect this deen, Ya Allah. You protect them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to help one another. Ya Allah, help us become assets to one another, Ya Allah. اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين